Hi, it's Thursday afternoon, September 26th. Update on Hurricane Helene tracking across the Gulf of Mexico, accelerating now and in its final several hours of approach to the Big Bend area of Florida. Landfall time has slipped maybe a couple hours, now expected to be somewhere in the ballpark of 10 or 11 p.m. Eastern time. And the storm is now Category 2, winds of 105 miles per hour with further strengthening expected and Helene is likely to become a major hurricane before landfall, Category 3 and even possibly Category 4, depending on the details of its inner core evolution over the last few hours here. This is the infrared satellite animation showing the deep cloud tops continuing to form up around the eye, which has not yet cleared out. You'll see this kind of warm spot moving around a little chaotically. That's not exactly where the center is. The center has actually been kind of tucked under the west side based on aircraft reconnaissance data. And that's just because the inner core is still in this process of becoming crystally clear defined. And if there's any good news today, it's that the inner core wind field has been kind of broadened out during the past 24 hours. And this has prevented the very most extreme outcome with the most rapid intensification rates of Helene. This is the aircraft data kind of showing you where it's been tracking the center over the last couple of hours and the wind speeds measured in coloring. You can see our strongest on the eastern side of the circulation, weaker on the west side just because it's moving so quickly now to the north northeast. And you'll notice that on some of its legs going through the eastern eye wall, when it does this leg, you'll see that there's multiple places where the peak winds in light pink here are being measured. There's almost a double wind max that has been persisting with the storm's inner core structure since it left the Yucatan Peninsula area yesterday. The effect of this is kind of smearing out the momentum of the eye wall across a broader core wind field, and that's smearing out means that the absolute peak winds so far have not increased to the absolute extreme uh, that might be possible. There's still time potentially, and the concern is that these double wind peaks may merge together, and if we get a more complete and defined eye wall that becomes more compact in a consolidated ring, that could quickly jump the winds into Category 3 or Category 4 territory. We're likely going to have a Category 3 hurricane no matter what at landfall, with low-end Category 4 potentially on the table if the inner core really consolidates over the final few hours here. This is the surface map with radar from the National Weather Service. You'll see kind of the double ring structure here. This is the primary eye wall, but there's these concentric bands. You might see even, there might even be one, two, three three in some sense here if you kind of look at this there's some structure where it's still a little double barreled a little bit of concentric banding going on near the core that shows you that smearing out of the wind field now you know the good news is that the absolute peak winds are maybe slightly less than the worst expectations however the bad news is that the wind field is spread out over a much larger area so you have this huge wind field and what i'm what we're plotting here on this map are the wind gusts currently being measured greater than you know 50 miles per hour in some places on the western coast of Florida? And you can see how far they are from the eye at this point. And check out you know Miami Dade and Broward County on the other side of the Florida Peninsula, seeing tropical storm force wind gusts as high as 50 miles per hour way over there. And so there's going to be wind impacts and hazards from power outages, et cetera, across the whole Florida Peninsula today as the storm makes its move and starts getting even closer to the peninsula. The other problem with this big fat wind field is it's just pushing so much water up the coastline of Florida and it's all going to pile up butting up against the western peninsula coastline and then especially in the nature coast in the Big Bend area where the maximum water pile up is expected with extreme impacts from storm surge inundation expected near and east of the landfall point across this whole section of coastline. Lots of flooding will be occurring there. You can also see that there's a lot of rain coming out ahead of this, so flash flood concerns even west of the track are a big deal here with high risk for flash flooding expected along the storm track as it moves through the Florida Panhandle and then into Georgia. Speaking of the track, this is the water vapor satellite loop. Just showing you that there's still that upper level trough digging in here over Mississippi and this is essentially what is guiding the storm now on an accelerated path towards the north northeast. It's starting to move 
more quickly and it will be very uh, rapidly moving inland and that, that's actually a, a big problem. You might think it would reduce rainfall but there's still going to be big flash flooding concerns despite that and it's actually going to bring strong winds well inland. So we're going to see deep penetration of hurricane force winds possible as the storm moves inland from the coastline and so Georgia expect big power outage issues and trees potentially getting blown over power lines etc due to hurricane force wind gusts even well inland from the gulf coast now in terms of the landfall location there's going to of course be a lot of attention paid to the wobbles in the track and where exactly hurricane helene's eye is going to cross the coastline just to give you a brief overview this is the current satellite picture well about an hour old as of this recording but this is the set of model runs initialized early in the overnight hours and where the hurricane is currently located relative to the expectation at about 1 p.m. Eastern time. So these teal dots are where the models expected the hurricane to be located at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And the little dimple here where the eye is, the, the center was tucked kind of right in here at this time. So relative to the expectation, it's pretty close. It's a touch slower. That's why the landfall time has shifted just a little bit later in the evening. But you can see that on this uh, set of model tracks, it's essentially on its route toward what the modeling consensus says will be a Taylor County landfall, but there is wiggle room here to the left or the right of that. And this could be anywhere in, you know, Taylor, Jefferson, Wakola, or even Eastern Franklin County, you know, that whole area could theoretically see the eye coming ashore. But it's important to realize that in some sense, this won't matter for a lot of places just because the core is so large. And if I give you an example of that, the HAFS model shows the size of the core eyewall wind field. Everything in purple is hurricane force or stronger. And if you move that into the coastline, all four of the counties that I just mentioned would be seeing impacts from the eyewall. So it's not like if the eye goes into Taylor County, the counties west of there won't necessarily get hurricane force winds and storm surge. That's not the case. Uh, but the, you know, the big city that is worrying about this is Tallahassee, which is in here. And so the exact details of where the eye goes, if it's east of the city, the exact location will matter a lot for whether Tallahassee specifically is in the western eye wall with powerful winds that can bring trees down in that area. So they'll be paying close attention. It, regardless, though, the entire nature coast, extreme impacts likely here. The east side is way worse than the west side as a general rule. For the wind here, the storm is moving very quickly to the northeast, so especially this northern eyewall and eastern eyewall will bring the strongest possible winds, and then storm surge inundation flooding could extend even miles inland from the coast with a storm like this. This is the National Hurricane Center official forecast, and this is just showing you all the hazards. Everything in red is a hurricane warning. You can see that these extend well inland into Georgia, almost all the way up to Atlanta. That's because the storm will be moving quickly, and so although wind speeds with the hurricane will decay quickly as it moves inland, they won't decay fast enough to get below hurricane force until it's deep into Georgia. So we could see wind gusts greater than 70, 80, 90 miles per hour, even in some of these inland areas. So be prepared for that. And that extends all the way down along the western Florida coastline as well, potentially as far down as Tampa Bay, where hurricane force gusts could occur. You can see the tropical storm force wind field in orange is extending over most of the southwestern Florida peninsula already. And we saw that that is verifying in observations. We have wind gusts over 40, 50, 60 miles an hour in South Florida right now as of this recording. So this wind field is huge and it's going to cause hazards across most of the state today. Storm surge, the deadliest hazard, can't stress that enough, 15 to 20 feet of maximum storm surge inundation possible along the nature coast in the Big Bend area of Florida with 10 to 15 feet as far west as Apalachicola. Some of that will depend on the exact track of the eye, but this is, in the worst case, how much inundation to expect. And even all the way down along the western Florida peninsula, like Tampa Bay, five to eight feet of storm surge will be flooding some areas. So please be aware of that and heat evacuation orders if they are given. Storm surge warnings are in place all the way down to the Florida Keys along the western coast of Florida. And there could be mild water level rises even along the southeastern U.S. coastline due to the southeasterly winds at near tropical storm force that will be pushing water into the coastline there as well. 
Flash flooding inland, a big concern over quite a wide swath of territory near the storm track as it goes in. You can see that some of this, you know, even if the track is, say, east of Tallahassee, a lot of the flash flooding risk is on the west side because we have that upper level trough to the west of the storm. So a lot of the rainfall is actually going to get enhanced north and northwest of the eye as it comes ashore. So you see this corridor of flash flooding risk extending into the Appalachians, including much of Georgia. And uh, please be aware of that. Uh, turn around, don't drown, as the saying goes, don't get caught in floodwaters on the roads in this area. That'll be it for this particular video update. Thinking of everyone, especially my alumni friends in Tallahassee, as the storm nears the area, this will be an extreme event for some places along the Big Bend area of Florida. So please take this seriously and be safe today. I'll continue to post more frequent updates on my social media, specifically Twitter slash X at Tropical Tidbits. You can follow me there for more posts throughout the day. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.